Congressman on this special occasion. Today, we celebrate the 66th birthday of Disneyland. to millions of guests around the world. Join us now as we go back to that memorable day, July 17, 1955. To all who come to this happy place, well, Disneyland is your land. Here we relive all memories of the past. And here you may savor the challenge and promise of the future. Disneyland is dedicated to the ideals, the dreams, and the hard facts that have created America. With the hope that it will be a source of joy and inspiration for all the world. So I just got to Disneyland. It is a very special day here. It is Disneyland's 66th birthday. And I checked the available reservations before I got to the park today, just out of curiosity. And it's completely booked. You can't go to California Adventure and you can't go to Disneyland. No more tickets for the day. So I'm expecting it to be really busy, but we're here to celebrate. And we have a very special themed video for you all today. Now back in 1955, when Disneyland first opened, where we're walking right now used to actually be a road. It used to be able to get dropped off right out front. It would be really nice to not have to take a bus or do the long tram walk. And as you can see, the lines are pretty hefty, but the gates have not opened yet. We're here pretty early, not even 7.30 yet. So I imagine they'll be opening those gates up soon and letting people in. I don't think anything's aged as well as Disneyland has. It's like being back here on April 30th again. Got all the cast members lining the streets, waving. I think this might be because it's its birthday. And I feel like the birthday this year is extra special since we didn't get to celebrate it last year. And last year was a big one. It was the 65th anniversary of Disneyland opening. So this year is the 66th. So we missed last year. And it definitely looks like everyone's ready to celebrate this year. We're rope dropping again. Now my plan is to go on all the rides that are still around that were here on opening day back in 1955. And our first one up is the Jungle Cruise. We're rope dropping the Jungle Cruise right now. Looks like a lot of other people might be as well. I'm so excited to get back on this ride. It hasn't opened when the parks reopened back on April 30th. So this is my first day riding the Jungle Cruise. It opened yesterday. I'm really excited to be here today. Looks like we're all running to get in line. This ride opened with the park in 1955 and it went through its very first major overhaul this past spring. So the Jungle Cruise opened when Disneyland opened on July 17th, 1955. So it's one of the very original rides. Walt Disney himself had a personal hand in making this ride what it is today. When they were first doing the designs of this ride, Walt originally wanted to use real live animals, but he realized that you can't make animals do things that they don't want to do. So they went with the animatronics instead. It wouldn't be until they opened the Kilimanjaro Safaris at Animal Kingdom that Walt would get to have his vision realized with live animals and tours to follow them. The pilot, the pilot you know, from what I hear, these guys are able to jump up to 30 feet oh, on the leaf rush row. Or you too might have to see a pachydermatologist. And they found this for stash of weapons. You know, folks, I would not recommend wearing anything yellow around here. Because, you know, they just might find it appealing. Oh, no. Now, so, friends, after making that right-hand turn, we have now crossed onto the Nile River. Which So 
the Jungle Cruise was delightful. I really enjoyed that. I even got a little emotional. It's such a classic Disneyland ride that going on it made me really feel like Disneyland was back. Hearing the music playing, the noises, it was just fantastic. And I love the changes that they made. As many of you probably know, they've been updating the Jungle Cruise, both at Disneyland and Disney World. The one at Disney World, instead of closing the ride, they've just been slowly updating different scenes of it as they go along. With Disneyland, since the park was closed for a year, they opted just to keep the ride closed until they could renovate the whole entire ride. And it was really beautiful. I really enjoyed the new scenes. I think they add a lot more fun to the ride. It was so good, I might try to get back on it later. Now, we can't have a Disneyland birthday celebration without a beautiful view of the castle blocked by a tree. Let's, let's get you a better view. There she is. Now, we're going to walk on straight through the castle to go on our next opening day ride. I think I'm going to do Snow White next. Peter Pan does have quite a long line, but it always has a long line, so it doesn't matter if I do it now or later. Now I know Snow White is different than it was back in 1955, as it was just reimagined from Snow White's Scary Adventure into Snow White's Enchanted Wish, but this is a very special ride. I'd even argue that without Snow White, Disneyland would not exist today because it was due to the success of the movie that Walt was able to go on and create many other movies and then eventually build Disneyland so that we can all enjoy and appreciate it now. So I'm going to enjoy this ride extra today. It's one of my favorites. I remember going on the version in Disney World when I was 10 and it really scared me and it still gets me a little bit today. Next on our adventure is Peter Pan's flight. A fun fact about this ride, in 1955 when the ride opened, Peter Pan himself wasn't actually featured in the ride and that's because the ride was supposed to make you experience flying through the air as if you were Peter Pan. However, after many guests complained, they did add Peter Pan into the ride. I'm actually making really good progress. I've done three rides so far. About to get on my fourth.
let it do whatever it wants to do and I will not make it go faster. And that's the last of my rides over in Fantasyland. We're going to make our way over to the Disneyland train now. That was also open on opening day. However, the stop we're getting on, I don't think it was open on opening day. I believe it only had the Main Street USA entrance and the New Orleans Square. For a safe ride, remember to stay seated with your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the train. The word autotopia actually is a play on words of automobile utopia and these cars were designed by the legendary Imagineer Bob Gurr. And I know a lot of people look at this ride and they're like, why is it still in Tomorrowland? It's not futuristic at all. But when this ride was first designed, these cars were very futuristic. And the way I like to look at it is if you're a young kid, maybe you're only eight years old and you get to get behind that wheel and drive your very first car this is kind of like their future they're getting a glimpse into their future of driving on the big open highways so while we're avoiding the crowds right this moment let's talk about the crowds at Disneyland on opening day Disneyland had given out 15,000 tickets to guests to come to the park on opening day unfortunately though there were 13,000 counterfeit tickets made, which means when people showed up at the park, Disneyland was not prepared for the number of guests that were there. Instead of 15, they had 28,000. And that is a huge increase, especially for a park that's opening for the very first time. So they ran out of food pretty early. I think the toilets weren't working in part of the parks. Several of the lands actually shut down due to a power outage and high heels were sinking through the still wet pavement of Main Street USA. So all in all, Disneyland opening day was actually quite the disaster. It was built on just 160 acres of orange groves and cost $17 million to build at the time. So of course, Main Street USA was also open on opening day. Hey, when you walk down the street, you can pretend like you're there in 1955. Main Street Cinema was actually open on opening day as well. This is an original attraction. So I checked the app and it looks, oh my goodness, what did we just walk into? Well, talk about timing. This is amazing. I'm so excited.
sing Happy Birthday. Unfortunately, the Mark Twain wasn't running when I went to go around the river, but going on the Columbia is still quite the nice journey, and I thoroughly enjoyed this moment. So as crazy as the crowds are here today, it was really fun taking you all along to do the opening day rides. It made me feel like I was transported back in time to 1955. I really enjoyed it, and I went on rides that I don't normally go on. Like, I normally don't take time to go on the Mark Twain, which I know I didn't go on the Mark Twain, but I still went around the river, and I don't usually go on the Mad Hatter's Tea Party, the teacup rides, I don't like spinning. But I had a blast, and I really, my favorite part of the day, hands down, was the cavalcade, the birthday cavalcade. Like, how amazing was that? We got to sing Happy Birthday to Disneyland. We got to hear Walt's opening day speech, just like it was 1955 again. So it really couldn't have been a better 66th birthday celebration. I hope that you all enjoyed coming along with me today as we rode those rides and we walked in Walt's footsteps. And if you enjoyed today's adventure and you want to come along for some more, please hit that subscribe button because I'd love to take you with me. We don't normally have plans, we usually just wing it, but today was especially a special planned theme video just for all of you. And I hope that you all have a magical day. And remember, magic is out there. <laughs>